adverse actions, intimidation, aggressive language, or physicality. Uh, therefore, I move seconded by the MLA for Fort Richmond that this matter be immediately referred to a permanent standing committee of this House for investigation. That was MLA Abi Khan speaking in the legislature yesterday. The CBC asked him for an interview today, but he declined. The CBC also requested an interview with NDP leader Wab Kanu, and uh, he joins us in studio uh, this uh, evening. Uh, thank you for joining us. Hello. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, thank you for uh, coming to the coming on My the program. My mic was off. Thank yeah, you for having me. The button. Um, you were listening to um, Abi Khan. Um, you heard him in the legislature. He stands by his version of events. Um, what's your response? Well, I'd like to tell you what happened yesterday. So we were at the Turban Day event, which is an event put together by my colleague Diljeet Brar who is uh, an NDP MLA from the boroughs. He's uh, the first turban-wearing Punjabi MLA to be elected in Manitoba history. And a year ago, he passed this uh, bill to recognize Turban Day in Manitoba to make it a celebration, an educational opportunity, a community gathering opportunity. And so as part of this, we we held a celebration this year, the first time that we get to celebrate it since this this has been enacted. And we had uh, a great event at the legislature. There's hundreds of people there. There's turban tying demonstrations. There's dance. There's food. It was a really, really uh, great event. And as part of that, the um, um, speakers at the event, in addition to the, myself and Diljeet and Mintu Sandhu, our other colleague as NDP MLAs, Diljeet invited Abi Khan to speak. And so he's reaching across the aisle, you know, a nonpartisan uh, gesture. And so Mr. Khan goes up to the stage and he made a lot of partisan comments and uh, he made a lot of partisan statements. Uh, you know, he's going after us. This is Diljeet's event at which he's extended a hand across the aisle. And Mr. Khan is, you know, using uh, his opportunity up there to take shots at us at Diljeet's event. And he's also, um, you know, the PC government this, the PC government that. And so he finishes up and uh, he comes over uh, to shake Diljeet's hand. He comes over to shake my hand as well. So I stood and as we're shaking hands, I leaned in and I told him, like, you shouldn't have made this a partisan thing. Like, we took a step on the high road to try and uh, reach out and invite you here to participate in our thing. You shouldn't have uh, made it a partisan thing. So we had our back and forth there. And then uh, at the end of it, I lean in again and, you know, our colleague Mintu's up on stage speaking at this point. I said, well, let's listen to Mintu speak now. And then that was the end of it. And then so this is at an event attended by hundreds of people. We're about six to ten feet away from a bank of media cameras and um, a bunch of uh, people who are sitting around us. And then the event continues on with uh, Mintu speaking from the stage. And then the event concludes with a dance performance. It was really nice, really nice community event. And then um, the issue, I would say, was raised later in the legislature and then um, became a political thing from that point on. The, the things that he said in the legislature, are those things that, that, that you said? No. Is Abi Khan lying? You know, I don't want to talk about Abi uh, in his statements, other than to say, I think that um, there's a lot of politics at play here. And, you know, we certainly had a tense exchange, tense words. I apologized yesterday in the House because I don't think that that was a time or place in hindsight. I probably should have just leaned into Avi and said, hey, I'd like to talk to you later. A couple of things I want to address. And then uh, left it at that. I mean, even so... He, um the way he described how he was affected by that interaction with you, um, and and um, what uh, what what was said during mm -hmm. those interactions, it it sounds like he was very hurt, and this was something that 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 affected him. Yeah, I agree. I definitely hear that, and I could see that, and you know that is why I chose to address it yesterday in the chamber, and and did apologize, saying you know what I I apologize first to Diljeet. This was not the time or place. I probably should have pulled Abby aside and said, let's talk about this later. And then I apologized to Abby as well, uh, saying, you know, uh, I could have found another opportunity to do so. I, I'm just, I wonder, he was very, very specific um, with what he said, you said. He, 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 he was very specifically quoting. He used very specific language. Yeah, and so did I. So what, 
Why do you think this is something that's come up now? Well, it is an election year. And I think there's a lot of politics at work here. Um, you know, Mr. Khan, uh, I take him at face value that he's uh, upset that we had a tense interaction. And, you know, um, I won't speak for him. Obviously, he can uh, describe his emotional reaction to that. But I'm sure that once he shared that with the PC team, then the political staff jumps in. And then it becomes uh, an opportunity to take shots at me. And, you know, it is something that I think I've personally expected. Everybody on our team has expected. I think we all know that the PCs are not going to be able to run an election campaign on health care or on, you know, their failures in government. So they're going to try and run uh, attacks against me. And, um, you know, I've talked to my family about this, talked to my kids, talked to my wife, Lisa, about it. And I want them to feel whole. I want to look after their mental health as we go through this process. But at the same time, I also recognize that this election that we're going into in Manitoba this year is not about me. So any time that there's a shot taken against me, I'll take the second to check in with the family, dust ourselves off, and then go back to work fighting for the people of Manitoba. Because we need to fix health care. We need a better provincial government in this province. And, you know, there's going to be issues like this that arise. And I think it's important for us to continue to focus on the substantive issues in politics. Like just today, 99% of the paramedics and lab techs and ultrasound techs in Manitoba voted to go on strike. That's a huge healthcare issue. And so I think we need to uh, keep a focus on that. This issue that's come up now is, is not something that's new. Um, you've admitted before that um, you've had trouble with your your temper, um, your your anger. Um, have you changed, or, or is this a side of uh, Wab Canoe that still exists? Well, I don't talk about myself in the third person, but uh, you know, I think everyone has seen me on a journey over the years, and that journey journey took me through this building. To be frank, you know, I worked here for a number of years, and I learned a lot. And I've improved a lot over the years. And certainly I hope people in Manitoba know that this journey, as it's been implemented in the political realm, having the great honor to serve as a leader of the opposition for the past uh, six years, is one where I've been putting the people first and working hard on issues like health care, like making life more affordable. And I am... Somebody who stands up for what I believe in, for what I believe is right. And um, I'm somebody who's going to continue to be on this journey, but I'm going to put the people first because, again, it's not about me. It's about healthcare. It's about improving the provincial landscape. It's about improving economic prospects for the next generation. And so that's where my focus is. You talked about your family. Mm hmm. These are. Um What's been said about you um, are, are very serious things. What, what did you say to your kids about about this incident, about what, what um, has been said out there? You know, as I've addressed this issue with my family, we have conversations. And I think um, my kids know that I hold myself to a very high standard. And I expect them to hold themselves to a very high standard in public as well. What, what do you mean? Well, I mean that... Um, when I see my sons at the hockey rink or on the basketball court or at school, I want them to govern themselves with calmness, integrity, uh, passion for sure, but also with a level head, right? And so even though I uh, dispute what uh, Mr. Khan has asserted in some details, I also am taking responsibility that my conduct yesterday was not perfect. And I would have liked to have perhaps had the opportunity to address the issue with him directly, but maybe chosen not uh, to do so at this community event and rather to maybe do so down the hallway a little bit later on. I mean, th 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 this is, seems like a case of he said, he said. Um, what should voters, do you think, take away from what we've heard in the legislature, from what we've heard in interviews, and from what they're hearing from you today? Well, I think that voters should focus on 
the issues that affect them first and foremost, like healthcare. And our team has a strong plan to fix healthcare. We all know that the PCs have failed repeatedly and have caused such damage to our healthcare system. And we should recall that this is going to be one of the determining issues, along with other factors like education and, you know, the cost of living. And the PC simply cannot contend an election talking about those issues. So this is not going to be the last time you see attacks made against me. This is not uh, the last time you're going to hear the PCs go negative. And I think, you know, Manitobans uh, should reflect on... um, who they want to lead this province. And I believe that our team has the right approach. We're putting the people of Manitoba first, and you're going to see us run a campaign that's focused on the best interests of Manitoban, Manitobans. And um, for the voter out there, you know, again, I take I take what you're saying seriously, Faith. It, it does come off he said, he said. But, uh, you know, I have... I'm optimist. I'm very optimistic, and I have a sense of confidence and trust in the people of Manitoba that when they look at the situation, they'll be able to make up their own minds. Do you think the parties can resolve this? Which? What do you mean by the parties can do you resolve think the, this? Do you think in the legislature, um, the progressive conservatives and the NDP can work through this and, and move forward? You know, I think that uh, partisanship is baked into the landscape of our provincial government. And that's the nature of the political enterprise. And this year, you're going to have a choice. You're going to have a choice between the PCs and the NDP in terms of who you want to run the provincial government. And our statement is that this is all the PCs have now. Whereas we're giving you an offer of an improved health care system, a renewed focus on economic development and education, and a more affordable cost of, le- cost of living. I don't think I heard a yes or a no in there, but... Uh... I, I appreciate you. Well, no, to answer your question directly. Okay. The PCs and the NDP are going to contest the election. Um, we're fighting for control of um, the future uh, opportunity to work on behalf of the people of Manitoba. That's a high stakes issue. And um, the emphasis that I put on fundraising, organizing, getting our team prepared for this election is so that we can deliver a government to the people of Manitoba that they can be proud of again. And we are going up against a PC party that's very desperate, but still has a lot of resources. And so it is going to be um, a hotly contested election, if I can uh, say that. Wab Kanu, leader of the NDP, um, appreciate you coming in studio today. Well, thank you so much for having me, and it's nice to talk to you in person after a few phone interviews over the years. It's nice to see you in real life. CBC Manitoba did request an interview with MLA Abhi Khan. He declined.